SFUSD. That's the place to be. SFUSD. Bienvenidos a Tijuanying. SFUSD. Everyone come and see. SFUSD. Join our family. Hello, scientists. How are you on this fine Tuesday? Ooh, that sounds great. I'm having a great day, too. I'm really excited because I have so much research to share with all of you. Last night, I looked through some science resources for teachers and found some pretty helpful information. Did any of you do any research yesterday? What did you learn? Oh, great. Some of you learned the same things I did. I took some notes in my notebook while I did the research, and let's read them together. We should also reread our question of the week so we can refresh our memory. Oh, I'll have to remember. How do we know when something is living? Underneath that, I wrote on my notes, all living things breathe, grow, change, and need food and water. Interesting. Some of the things that I believed about living things were right, but some of them were not. Yesterday I'd said some of these facts, but I added that living things should move and have a face. But the more I think about it, plants don't really move or have a face. Well, I'm glad I did research because otherwise I wouldn't have known that. It's always good to do research. You never know what new things you'll learn. Knowing that, do any of you need to change something on your T-chart from yesterday? That's okay, scientists. When we learn new information, it's okay to change answers that we used to have. Hmm. I think all of the items that I placed are placed correctly on my T-chart. But you know what? With these new facts that I had researched about living things, I think I could finally classify my items from the beach. Will you help me out? Oh, gracias, científicos. I really appreciate any help I can get. I had made some symbols that represent what living things do. I was thinking we could use them to help us determine which items are living and which are non-living. The wavy lines represent breathing. The line with arrows means growing. The triangle stands for change. And this is actually a symbol that most scientists use for the word change. The broccoli is for food and the droplet is a symbol for water. So, scientificos, let's start sorting my finds from the shore. Let's start with the crab shell I found. Let's go through our checklist. Okay, so the crab shell itself doesn't breathe. Well, if it's on the crab, I, it, it does. But let's see, by itself it doesn't grow. It doesn't really change anymore either, and it can't eat or drink. I guess the crab shell without the crab is non-living. Hmm, but what if there was a crab inside? Do you think that would make a difference, Cientificos? I think it would too, but for now, we'll categorize that as non-living. Let's see what's next, <gasps> the dried seaweed. Oh, it wants to stay on the beach. This one is confusing because it's a plant, but let me see. Does it breathe? I'm not really sure. I don't think it could change or grow either because it dried out. But I'm also not sure if it can eat or drink anything. Hmm, I might have to wait to sort the seaweed. We'll put that back on the beach. That's okay. I might just need to do some more research tonight. So we'll just move on to the seashell. Hmm. Scientists, this reminds me a bit of the crab shell. Do you think we need to go through our checklist or is this something, or can we use the information we just learned about the crab shell to help us out? Estoy de acuerdo, I agree. We should just use what we learned about the crab shell and well, the seashell is considered non-living. Oh, now for the sand dollar. 
Okay, so it wasn't breathing. It can't change or grow. And from what I saw, it can't eat or drink. That makes it non-living. And now for the crunchy gulls feather. Ugh. Can this feather breathe? I don't think so either. Can this feather grow or change? Oh, interesting. I heard sometimes scientists say that they've seen really small feathers on baby birds, so they must grow. But scientificos, can this feather still grow if it's not on a bird? Yeah, I didn't think so either. So maybe this feather used to be able to change and grow, but now it can't. I guess that likely means that it can't eat or drink either. This would make the feather non-living. Now, everything except for the seaweed is sorted. I'm going to have to do some research tonight on that. Did any of the items surprise you, Cientificos? Me too. The feathers surprise me the most because when they're on the bird, they're living. But once they're not, they're non-living. Some things that used to be living can now be non-living. That's a really interesting concept. I can't wait to see what I learned through my research tonight. Our time together is almost up, Cientificos, but I really love learning the difference between living and non-living things with you. I'm hoping that tomorrow we can finally determine whether this seaweed is living or non-living. Maybe you can ask another scientist tonight. Thank you for learning with me today. Y nos vemos mañana. Hi, everybody. My name is Ms. G, and I'm an art teacher and an artist just like you. Is art alive? Is art living? Hello? Hello? What do you think, Flo? Is art living? I haven't introduced you to Flo. Flo, this is everyone. Everyone, this is Flo. Flo says hi. We're asking complicated questions, Flo. We're thinking deep thoughts. In order to ask these questions, we're going to have to think like an artist and a scientist. We're going to have to get curious, ask questions, look closely and observe. Hmm. What is art? Art is creating. How do you create? You combine different parts to create something new. When we combine different parts, the parts change. When something is alive, it's always changing. Just like Flo. Just like me. Just like you. Are you art? Are you always creating? Are you always changing? Flo says yes. Are you art? Are you always creating? Are you always changing? Hmm. Hmm. I'm going to explore this. I'm going to gather paintbrushes and water and paper towels. I'm going to use the primary colors of red, yellow, and blue. And I am going to paint flow. I am going to see how combining these different parts will create something new.
I'm going to share my creation, my art, by hanging it on my door. I'm going to observe my art to see if anything happens, to see if anything changes. I wonder if my art will change from the weather. I wonder if my art will change from the people in my environment. Do you have any guesses about how my art might change? Can you try this experiment at home? Can you create a piece of art by combining different parts? Inspiration? Materials? Creating your art? Would you tell others in your life about this experiment and ask them to help you observe the changes? Could you even write your observations in your science notebook? I'm going to take a picture of my art every day to record the changes. I'm also going to write my observations in my science notebook. Next week, we'll report back about what we've observed. We at SF Loves Learning love to see what you've created. You can share your art with us and your observations in your science notebook by following the link to our website or by taking a picture of the QR code. I had such a great time with you today exploring our question, is art alive? I wonder what will happen next. Now, let's go make some more art. Hello friends, Dr. Matthews here. There are many centers from museums to parks to cultural and recreation centers all around San Francisco that build community for children and families. I would like to show you some of these places by playing a game with you called I Spy. Are you ready? This is the side of the African American Arts and Culture Complex located in the historic Fillmore Jazz District. In this picture, I spy many African-American artists and musicians performing in the mural. How many do you see? What do you see them doing? That's great. This center celebrates many of the arts and cultural contributions of African-Americans in history and today. The African-American Art and Culture Complex is the only city-owned arts and cultural center in San Francisco that's dedicated to Afrocentric culture, traditions, and values. In addition to programming for children and adults, including performance, visual, and digital art, the center hosts lots of events where people come together to learn, celebrate with their friends, and make change in their communities. What do you do to make friends? Enjoy the rest of the show. Hola, buenos dias. My name is Araceli Leon, or Maestra Leon. I teach kindergarten at Monroe Elementary School, and I'm SF Loves Learning's Read Aloud Coordinator. Today I get to read a book with you. It's called Caspian Finds a Friend by Jacqueline Visade and illustrated by Morales Brown with permissions from Chronicle Books. Oh, I'm so excited to read with you today. Caspian Finds a Friend. Have you ever looked for a friend? Me too. I hope you found them. Caspian lives in a lighthouse surrounded by a cold, gray, blue sea. Every day, he watches the waves, wondering, waiting, wishing for a friend. Every night, he casts his light out into the darkness, searching. Caspian looks very determined. But no one arrives, just the sea and the skies. And so he waits. Until one day, he has a thought. He hurries home to find paper and pencil. On his table sits a bottle with flowers. 
He empties it, rolls up his paper, and slips it inside. Oh, what does his paper say? Will you be... Then down to the wide open sea, he runs and throws the bottle in. He watches it float away. Farther and farther, smaller and smaller. Days sink into weeks, weeks into months. He waits and waits, his hopes bobbing like a bottle on waves. Caspian is very patient. Early one morning, Caspian noticed a glistening nestled in the rocks. He slowly uncorks the bottle and pulls out a piece of paper. Only one word is written. I wonder what it says. Do you have any ideas? Let's find out. He races to his little rowboat and pushes out to sea. Day fades into night and still he keeps rowing and rowing. The stars shimmer to life, illuminating the darkness. Caspian lies down in his boat and looks up. Watching, wondering, wishing and slowly falls asleep, his dreams drifting on a gentle sea. At first blush of dawn, Caspian wakes. In the distance, he sees something floating towards him. Can you see it? I can too. Closer and closer. Bigger and bigger. The bear's eyes are warm and gentle. He slowly lifts up a piece of paper. Will you be my friend? Caspian holds up his. Yes! Together they travel across a sparkling, sunlit sea back to the lighthouse. Back home. The end. Oh, I'm so happy Caspian found his friend. And I hope you are finding ways to be creative and stay connected with your friends. Friends come in many different shapes and forms. And it's so special that I got a chance to read about this friend with you. Until next time, bye! Learn to cough and sneeze with your pal, Grover. <laughs> Step one, realize you're about to sneeze. <laughs> Step two, move your elbow toward your nose and mouth. Step three, gazoon tight. One, two, three. <laughs> Remember to cough and sneeze into your arm or elbow and not your hands. Hi friends, it's Miss Kyra here with San Francisco Ballet's Dance in Schools and Communities program. I'm here with another dance lesson for you all this time on distinguishing living and non-living things. First, we're going to talk about the characteristics of living things. Then we're going to act it out and give examples. And lastly, we'll say goodbye. Now we've got a lot to get through, so let's get going. Living things have different characteristics than non-living things. They use locomotive action, they grow, and they reproduce. From just hearing that, can you think of one non-living thing and one living thing? I'd love to see your example of a living thing in three, two, one, go. Nice. I'd love to see your example of a non-living thing in three, two, one, go. 
Nice job. If that's a little bit tough for you, don't worry. We're gonna go over a few examples right now. All right, so number one, living things use locomotive action, or to put it simply, they move. That includes animals, humans, and plants when they want to photosynthesize or soak in the sun to make food. Can we imagine that we're a plant in the ground and moving our leaves around to take in sunlight? Let's reach forward all the way to soak in the sun. Let's reach in back of us, up top, even going onto our tiptoes to reach up, going to the side, one arm in front, one arm in back, other way, maybe going all around the room. Nice. Now that we've gotten all this sunlight, we've got to catch some water too. Can you imagine there are raindrops dropping onto your petals or leaves? How does that change the quality of our movement, of our arms? Nice. Now, can we look to the lower body and imagine that we're a mushroom spreading our root system or mycelium deeper into the ground? Do our roots spread so far that maybe they even start to locomote us through the room? Are they slow moving roots or are they fast moving roots? It's up to you. Maybe they go up further up towards the ground or maybe they're even deeper. Awesome, nice job friends. Now we're really locomoting. Number two, living things grow. You all watching right now are still growing. Can you think of a few things that help you grow right now? I can think of a few. How about sleeping? Sleeping helps you grow at night. Or a healthy diet. That means eating fruits from high trees, reaching up towards the sky, taking veggies from the ground, and eating protein that keeps you strong. Can I see everybody's muscles? Nice. Also things like exercising. So swimming, however you like to swim, dancing, and running. Can I see everybody run as fast as you can? Nice. These are all things helping you grow. Number three, living things reproduce. So plants have seeds and animals have babies. Can you think of a difference between adults and babies? Babies are so small because they're growing, right? So a baby shark is going to be different than a big mama shark. And a baby giraffe is going to be different than a big papa giraffe with a super long neck. Can you think of your own baby animal example versus an adult? I'd love to see that. Let me see your baby example in three, two, one, go. Awesome. What about your adult example? In three, two, one, go. Nice. These are all examples of animals that have reproduced. One of the few qualities of living things. So to review, living things use locomotive action. They grow and they reproduce. Thank you so much for joining me as we distinguish between living and non-living things. I hope now you feel confident that you can create art and ideas about meaningful topics. I can't wait to see how you categorize more living and non-living things in class. Thank you again for joining me and I hope to dance with you again soon. Bye everyone. Hey, my name is Sumaya. This is my Alton family. Hi everybody. Hi everybody. So Maya, can you tell the people at home what we've been doing while we've been home together so much? We've been playing music and dancing. Did it!
Hi, I'm from the California Academy of Sciences and the Science Action Club team. We work with teams of student scientists from all over the world. In this clip today, we'll see what some of our friends are up to at the Seattle Public Library System. When you're playing this game, one or two people will start as the birds and the rest will be bees. Bees fly around by flapping their wings and buzzing. If a bee is tagged by a bird, it freezes and becomes a flower. Flowers kneel on one knee and make petals with their arms. To unfreeze, flowers must attract a bee and say, Bumblebee, Bumblebee, please take some pollen from me. If a nearby bee chooses to stop and high five the flower, the flower can continue as a bee again. If the birds tag all of the bees, start a new round. Why can't this game continue without the bees? Ask yourself about the relationship between bees and flowers. Thank you to the Seattle Public Library System for facilitating pollen freeze tag and showing this easy game to learn more about pollinators that we can play with our families at home. Hello, I'm Superintendent Dr. Vincent Matthews of the San Francisco Unified School District. It made me so happy to spend time with you today and I hope you had fun too. What did you make on the show today? Submit your content here using the QR code or go to bit.ly bit backslash S-F-U-S-D, yes, Y-E-S, and watch all of our episodes at sfusd.edu backslash SF loves learning. And now it's time to say goodbye. So let's sing our goodbye song. For this song, you have to use your whole body. Will you sing it with me? Wave high, wave low. For now, it's time to go. Wave your elbows, wave your toes. Wave your tongue and wave your nose. Wave your knees, wave your lips. Blow a kiss with your fingertips. Wave your ears, wave your hair, wave your belly and wave your derriere. Wave your chin, wave your eye, for now it's time to say goodbye. Bye bye. SFUSD, that's the place to be. SFUSD, bienvenidos at the Ying. SFUSD. Everyone come and see SFUSD, join our family.